Blockbuster, um, and it's, um, I'm sure you wouldn't, uh, you, we were talking about it earlier that you're, you considering most of your stuff electronic or electronic cut if you're feeling fancy. Yeah, it depends how exotic you are. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, I, we, I was listening to your song, Laser Boy, on the way over here. Oh wait, no, you're Laser Boy, I was listening to your song, Death Ray, on the way over here. That's confusing. Okay. Let's listen to that. Yes, Death Ray, very song. hardcore. Or hard, more hardcore than some other songs. Give us the scoop on the song. Well, I tried to really capture the essence of what a death ray would be. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> if, so, if a death ray were a song. Yeah. I think he nailed it. <laughs> and uh, the lyrics are about being a super villain, which I am. So. All right. Oh, because you're laser boy. All right. Yes, and who are you a supervillain against? Who knows? Who knows? Um, yeah, that guy doesn't matter. It's, it's, he actually annihilated my um, high school history teacher, Mr. Lopez. You <laughs> or evis eviscerated him. You uh, for no reason. You at killed all. him. Well, kills a strong word. Yeah, well, eviscerates pretty strong too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, strong. but eviscerates more exotic. Eviscerates more. Uh, it's it's all the electronic exotic, yeah, of it's murder. The <laughs> Yeah, well, because it's an electronic song, hard for me to pick up on a whole lot of the lyrics. I don't know if we want to do like one of those genius rap things right now and go line by line through the lyrics. Yeah, is there, was there any other inspiration behind the song or what's your typical approach to creating a song? Especially for Laser Boy songs, you got to think about the live performance. Mm -hmm. Got to think about how that would uh, make people in the crowd feel. And if you make them feel maybe kind of scared, energetic, it'll make them, it'll make them like the song more, I guess. Yeah. Or hopefully that's the problem. So fear is the emotion that you're going for? Definitely. And how any, many- Any strong emotion will do. Yeah, how many people get eviscerated per performance? Is it percentage or is it like a minimum number? Like 99.9%. I don't think anyone survived yeah. yet. Yes, okay, so. Yeah, I was wondering, like, hey, how come the world doesn't know about you? Because you keep killing your audiences. Yeah. Yeah, 99.9% .9 of them. So if there's if there's a thousand people, one of them will live. But so far, it's, there's one guy who's, like, just going to be kind of dead in every audience uh, that's under a thousand. I mean, why are we... Were you guys wondering why I have a hazmat suit on right now? Uh, yeah, because we're in the same room it's and kinda, I can see it. It is a little strange. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> is that to protect you from the death rays? Yeah, it doesn't. I do. I do my best. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's pretty crazy. Do you have one for for us? Um, I'm sorry. I I don't know. This might I'm be sorry. our last podcast. I'm guys. feeling slight. I'm feeling evisceration coming on. Yes, I'm feeling. Yeah. I guess that's why my bone marrow has been leaking out of my body. <laughs> if you if you feel a leakage of bone marrow, it's definitely connected. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I hear that's a sign. Um, Ask your doctor if evisceration is right for you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, you guys both have stage names that you use. Roman goes by Finn G. And okay. the slightly, potentially more dangerous uh, uh, name, uh, Laser Boy. How did you guys get can't come up with your names? And why do you have uh, stage names for your uh, music? For me, I kind of, I don't know, my name... Roman Guth. It, Guth is just an intense last name. Um, <laughs> it's pretty powerful. And I also, when I made my uh, my YouTube channel with my music, I, I didn't want to use my real name. Mm -hmm. And how I came up with the name Finn is I, I used to, growing up, I grew up in Colorado, and I used to have a lot of kids who told me that um, I looked Canadian, which I, I don't even know what that means. And I knew a kid in fourth grade named Finn who was Canadian. And so... <laughs> I was just like, oh, I'll name myself Finn. And then I was, G kind of stands for Guth, but it's just, I, Finn G has a ring to it. Yeah. Um, so I just go by G. Yeah, now there is another Finn G on YouTube. I saw Do that. you have a beef with him, and how have you settled it? That's uh, my evil stepbrother. Um, ah. Uh, every family reunion is terrible. Um, he goes up to me, and 
he chucks a balloon at me full of uh, <laughs> a fish paste. Oh no! That's, and, um, wow, that's awful. It's like, hey, what do you think of this? Stupid. <laughs> wow. And uh, is that I just cry? Is that why he has another N in his name? Yeah. Is that? Well, he he feels like he's superior because of mm. it. Because he's got extra letters in his name. But yeah, you got a period goes, in yours. So well, he's very proud of it. He goes he doesn't go by Finn, he goes by Finn. Um, um, Finn because... Gosh, we all know someone like that. Pearson. Yeah, exactly. All right. Yeah. And and what about Laser Boy? That's kind of exciting. Or is that like <laughs> Yeah, that's my birth name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. Quincy's the nickname. Like my my birth name was too exciting, so I had to tone it down a bit with Laser Boy. <laughs> Yeah, how'd you come up with that? Do you want the serious answer or the not so serious answer? Uh, well, how about you give us one and we'll figure it out. Or give us both and we have to guess yeah. which one is which. Okay. Okay, well, it was a trick question. It's all the same. Oh. The answer. But, uh, what happened was uh, with that Men in Black story, mm. I was working at a Starbucks much, much like this one. And uh, these two guys came up to me, black suits, one from Will Smith, one of them was the other guy. <laughs> and uh, they approached me and they... They call me Laser Boy, and I'd never heard that before. And I was like, what are you talking about? And um, they say, you're Laser Boy from, you know, the moon. And I was like, you know, from Oceanside. I don't know what you're talking about. Um, anyway, so they pull out these, like, crazy guns and stuff, and they start trying to shoot me, and they miss. And uh, turns out I was Laser Boy, and I am from the moon. So That's intense. I feel like... You should be anti laser. I want to hear Will Smith's rap of uh, yeah. He was a laser boy. He <laughs> said he was a laser boy. boy. <laughs> <laughs> so see you later. Uh, oh wait, that's not Will Smith. Um, I want to hear his cover of that. No, that was his son. Oh, okay. oh okay. that makes more sense. Yes, that makes a lot more sense. Yeah, you know what? Both those stories were equally interesting to one another and equally believable. Um, we, there was another song that. Um, you were talking about, Roman, uh, that you wanted to go over because you said there was an interesting story behind it, and it was Red Eye. Let's take a listen to that. You said there's a real deep meaning behind the song Red Eye. Uh, Let's go into that. How did you, uh, what's the story behind good. the song? So I was sitting down at my grandma's house nice. watching TLT, like you do at your grandma's <laughs> Yes. And I watched this very heart-wrenching piece about an old man who had been talking back and forth to, with a Russian woman mm -hmm. who was in her 20s and obviously way too attractive right. for a, a a big guy in his 50s like mm -hmm. to, be, to be honest and she's obviously a russian bot not real so he was talking back and forth with her for like a month or two and he flew all the way to russia to this event that they have where all these old guys go see their russian ladies and they hang out and she uh, she stood him up and she didn't show up wow. and it it moved me so much that I wrote a song about. Wait, yeah. was any of that true? <laughs> yeah, no, that's 100% oh true. Oh my gosh, I thought you were, you're pulling a laser boy on me. No, I'm, not, I'm being 100% okay. honest with you. That is, oh hey, okay, I've listened to the song multiple times. I did not get that impression. It's because it sounds serious. It's, you know, I flew across the world just oh, to know. Oh, you're right. And, and then he says, and your English isn't great, but that's okay. Okay. I thought you were referencing the Tokyo Police song, Your English is Good. No, no, no. But, um, yeah, so it just it was so emotional. The song's called Red Eyes because uh, it's talking about both the flight, like a red-eye flight, gosh. and like red eyes from crime. Oh, my gosh. Oh. And the red scare uh, from the Hoover scare. administration. Yeah. Yes. Because... It goes deep into the Hoover administration. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, there are so many. There's so many. That's why it's called the Red Scare. It works on stuff. Oh, my gosh. There's so... Now that I'm thinking about it, there's so many references to the Hoover administration. Absolutely. How, now, that's... And it's Russian. But we also deep. should note that... Zach has quite a large uh, sticker on his laptop. 
that it's the uh, this is actually one hundred percent true. Yes, Hydra. I can take not a picture. Right it is now. the Hydra logo, but it's not me. It's my computer is definitely way into Hydra, like more than a healthy amount into Hydra. How deep is this conspiracy go? Like you know, it's like everyone means like yeah, hail Hydra. They get into a phase, and my computer is not out of that phase. It is not a phase. It's a is lifestyle. Is it a virus? Uh, no, it's on the outside, and I guess you could get an outside oh. virus. So it's like an infection. Yeah, it's an okay. infection. It's a skin disease. Get an ointment. He's got. Him. It's a. It's a. Can your computer get a tumor? <laughs> <laughs> it's not a tumor. Is this gonna make uh, the people here uncomfortable? <laughs> Wait, which people? Uh, you know, in this restaurant. Oh yeah, I don't know. They uh, we're in the bathroom. Uh, I mean, nobody can hear us. Yeah, I locked the door. Yeah, there. Yeah, I mean, there cool. has been that guy being like, uncomfortable because they can't use the restroom. Yeah, and this is a one person restroom with we are in the women's bathroom and that too yeah, yeah right I, so you guys are in the women's i'm in the me and roman are in the men's yeah, yeah. oh that explains it oh yeah. so this isn't a urinal at all what is this no <laughs> you guys i think you guys are in stalls what have i been that's playing like, on the, that's a bidet cable? that's yeah that's uh, anyways um laser boy uh-oh kim k you got a thing for kim kardashian <laughs> Um, let it out, man. Or is this a different Kim? What'd you say? <laughs> Kim K, the, the song. Is uh, this the, the Kardashian, or is this referring to a different Kim? No, this is definitely Kim Kardashian. All right. Pre or post Kanye relationship? Uh, this is at the very beginning. I actually met them. Really? Uh, yeah. Before or after uh, meeting Will Smith? The, okay, so the Will Smith thing was way before. Okay, I remember later. This has been that was like a, like two million years ago, something like that, right? Where the I Will saw. Smith thing. Yeah, like about two million. Well, who knows? Because he did the flashy thing. That's well, true. I have to consult true. with Connor about whether Will Smith is a fifth dimensional being. Yeah, he likely is. Who knows? Uh, so, so you met Kim K. So right, I actually met Kim K. and and Kanye, and I. You know, as I was talking to them, I could tell that Kim wasn't so much into Kanye as a lot of people thought she was. Ah. And so that, and you were definitely right. Yep. And yeah, and we were really hitting it off, but you know, I wasn't <laughs> interested in her, so I kind of wasn't on about her. Uh, yeah, so, that's fair. so was it a, a song to woo her or to unwoo her? Um. It was a song to let her know what she missed out on. Ah, I see. I see. Oh, okay. So like a, got away. A, a Taylor Swift revenge kind of song. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Yeah. Taylor Swift is one of my biggest influences. Oh, yeah. Really? <laughs> I it yeah. kind of, uh, that, you know, actually, that makes total and complete sense. Um, totally. I totally hear it now that you mention what's, it. What's your favorite Taylor Swift song? Right now. Don't think about it. Uh, Say it. Are you ready for it? Yep, so ready. That. That no, it's that song. Oh. Are you ready for it? Is that a Taylor Swift song? It is. A, it is a Taylor Swift song. Okay. All right, I think it's just called "Ready for It." I oh. haven't. I obviously aren't. I'm not up on my Taylor Swift lore. Yeah, I'm not a. Ta- I'm not a taste wear, as they call themselves. You're not a taste wear. You haven't been swayed by the taste. <laughs> Sweet. I'm no, not, I'm not a get swifty. Yeah. I don't have those taste suede shoes. No, 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 you don't. for doing the interview you're gonna stay uh uh past the break and we're gonna continue with our podcast thing but i'm just gonna let you guys have an opportunity to plug all your stuff where can we listen to your music where can we follow your antics uh uh, we want you to plug your stuff now because obviously people are gonna turn the video off as soon as they hear that you guys are no longer oh yeah hey don't be too rough by yourself here's an opportunity to plug your stuff a fin word Okay, um, so you can, if you want to listen to my music, you can listen to my, listen to my music at finng. Um, that's on YouTube. Um, my Instagram is uh, 
hey underscore Rome. Um, but if you guys actually, me and Quincy and a few other people have a band called uh, Rad Dad, um, and we have an Instagram. And that's going to be more uh, official, and we'll probably have a Spotify and everything once we get that up and running. And I'm also planning for Finji getting a Spotify going pretty soon. Well, that's awesome. Sweet. That's awesome. And Laser Boy, what's how, how can people follow you? So you can listen to me on SoundCloud, and then I have Spotify as well. Yeah, and you have um, a couple different names that you put your music under, right? Right. But just just listen to Laser Boy. Okay. <laughs> and, it, and if people want to find you in general, what's your address? <laughs> uh, well, if you want to find me, uh, I have a very particular set of skills. <laughs> or skills that would make me a nightmare for those kind of people. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. That okay. makes sense. Let's just, let's just say the first step rhymes with Bill... Uh, Smith. <laughs> Bill Smith. <laughs> That's good. What were you going to say? But, anywho, yeah, just look up Laser Boy on Spotify, SoundCloud. You'll find it. And nothing else. Right. And it's L A Z E R B O I. Yes. Uh, so when I, when I on, on the way over here, uh, I was asking Siri to play the music. When I said Laser Boy, nothing came on. And I had to say Laser Boy. And then it worked. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're if you're talking to Siri, that's the that's only way exactly to, to say it. She's like, oh yes, laser boy. I know exactly. Oh what yes, about. obviously. Oh yes, laser boy. Laser boy. <laughs> and we're back. We're oh Finn G and and uh, uh, laser boy. They came back into our bathroom that we're in. Uh, Audio is much better in the women's bathroom. They're giving us some dirty stairs. Yeah, I way. know. I mean, they, it might just be because they've been holding it in for the last uh, 40, 50 minutes or so. Probably. There's a pretty long line. Yeah. Uh, but anyways, so we're back into our our natural habitat of asking ridiculous questions that have even more ridiculous answers. And because we're with two music boys today we're going to talk about bad band names and there's a lot of real ones and a lot of fake ones that we could talk about yep um and rad dad definitely isn't a bad band name that's a fantastic band name so that's immediately off the list right appreciate it yeah is there i know pearson has a couple of bad fake ones yeah what's a um here's a okay so let me give you the lowdown on this I've had a, a list, uh, I've been in a group chat for the last four years with eight psychopaths, um, and we're coming up with the absolute worst band names that we possibly can. So I have at least, let's say, 2,000 on here. Wow. I want to give you, here's just one, and we're going to talk about this, what their, what this band would be like. What's their sound? What's their sound? What's their essence? Okay. Curious George... And the electric fence. Dang, <laughs> that that hits you. Yeah, I feel like it's. I'm getting reggae vibes metal. from it. Reggae, really? I get metal. metal. Metal reggae. Metal reggae for sure, actually. Okay, metal reggae. Is there metal... absolutely metal reggae? Is there a metal reggae band? There, yeah, they exist. Look it up right now. Uh, but you should... Is there like a remix of a Jack Johnson song as a metal cover? Maybe. <laughs> is that a thing? I am sure that exists. Like, uh, what's it? Better Together? Look up Better Together Metal Remix. Uh, <laughs> oh my gosh. I there... think they I think they exist. You should, if you can, put it in. There are you metal should... reggae bands. Um, I, I can't tell if this is the name of the song or the name of the band. Big Up? Or, or, Big up. or uh, Skindred? Oh, that doesn't sound good at all. I imagine that a metal reggae band would look like the two, like, ghostly agents in the second Matrix movie. They're like, I was just... <laughs> yeah, they're, like, white and they have the dreadlocks. That's exactly what they yeah. look like. Uh, probably. Yeah. I'm trying to think of what that would sound like. So, is it just a combination of, is it just, like, reggae and then it's metal? Or is it, like, reggae metal? Like, is it like... So, reggae's got, like, that swing to it and they have, like, yeah, a... Like particular type of lyrics but we can use the uh, like the instruments of metal and like the the, the veracity of metal that yes. sounds about right it's it's like uh mixing red bull and uh vodka oh that that could be one of their songs it's red right. bull and vodka yeah i'm i just, like so badly want to do like an impression like like a whose line is it anyway kind of thing and we just break into a song 
but I'm definitely not talented enough to do that right now. You guys might be. I'm sure you got instruments around you. Make a metal reggae song called have a guitar on the thread. <laughs> Red Bull and vodka. Go. Oh, is that you? Yeah. <laughs> what's a uh, what's a famous reggae song? I feel like yeah. Um... Don't worry. <laughs> Don't you worry. Be About happy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, that's. Fine. I don't know. That's. I think. Yeah. Let's move on to the next band name. <laughs> Yeah. Oh wait. Oh, I'm getting. We we're getting some something. music. Now you now just gotta there have distortion on it. There room in this bathroom for a guitar. Huh? There definitely isn't room for a guitar in this bathroom. I mean, there's a good there's a good echo. Can you play it into like four or five distortion pedals? Um. And turn the gain all the way up. I don't. I just have the guitar. I don't have enough room. Well, rut row. Yeah, I mean, we are in a bathroom. You didn't expect anybody to bring all that stuff, did you? Yeah, we're well, me and Quincy are already sharing a toilet seat, so it's already <laughs> yeah. I mean, kind of yeah. Person had another bad band name. I got so many bad band names. Yeah, it's give us the best one. Ridiculous. So I'm gonna hit you rapid fire with a lot of these band bad band names, and we'll go through a couple bad album titles as well. Nice a little bonus for you. Hit me hard. Uh, num one of my favorites. This is real. A band name. Uh, let's get out of this terrible sandwich shop. That's a band name. That's the name of the band. All right. It's long, but I have respect for it. Okay. Yeah. And then the next one is the string cheese incident. <laughs> I mean, it's a better movie name than a band yeah, name. Yeah, the band band <laughs> names usually have like a story behind it. What would the story behind the, the string, string cheese incident? incident? Oh man, you don't even want to know. What's your craziest band story? Oh, dude, the string cheese incident by yeah. far. Yeah, jeez. Okay, give us another one. Uh, dogs die in hot cars. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Do you guys have any bad band names that you guys went through before Rad Dad? We, uh, for a little bit, we were called Bump the Bumble Jacks. The Bumble Jacks? Um, it was based off of, the, we were like one time looking through like Craigslist or something stupid, I don't remember, and then I was just like, I told Quincy, like, hey, like, what's going on with such and such? And he's like, none of your business, Bumble Jack. <laughs> And it just made, he meant to say, you know, none of your business, Jack, and it just made no sense. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah, that's... The the, the, the name doesn't sound so bad, but the story behind it is good. You know, uh, that's ridiculous. So now, uh, I'm trying to... There was one band I'm trying to find, but it's not working. Yeah. So the next part, we're going to we're gonna look at some bad album covers, and I'm going to have Zach or Evan, whoever wants to, describe the cover and read the band, the album. Okay. Okay, here we go. I'm going to describe this to you. <laughs> it's on a, a soft blue uh, album cover with bright red letters. There's a small picture in the middle of a guy dressed in all white. Mr. Rogers uh, looks, looking cover. Yeah, very Mr. Rogers looking. This album looks like it's from the 70s or something like that. He's in mm -hmm. a cemetery and he's kneeling down at a tombstone. It looks very solemn. The record company is Rainbow Records. What, what would you guess... Freddie Gage's album is called. What's it described to me again, just real quick, a refresher of what's on the album? Blue, Tombstones, oh, 70s tombstones. white guy. People yeah. are really dying to get in there. <laughs> well, you're close. It's called All My Friends Are Dead. All <laughs> 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 My Friends Are Dead. Is smiling? And it's, it's funny because the, the, it has like the Rainbow Records logo on the bottom left, and it's like yeah. All rainbow letter. I mean, font. if you were like squinting and just looking at the album in a story, it looks like a, a it could be a children's album. Yeah, yeah. Huh? First glance, it's just like, oh, this is like how to learn your ABCs and stuff like that. We have Pearson has a plethora of bad inventions. Um, I sure do. And we we want to go over a couple. So these are real inventions that people. Yep. Like bought, they were on Amazon, or or like they got funded, and you'll find that they're quite ridiculous. They went through all the levels up to production there are, at the very least. Yeah, there are so many gatekeepers. Well, everything. Yeah, like you'll you'll see some of the stuff like on Amazon or Target and stuff like that. It's like how did so many people in a row make this bad of a mistake? 
like what was the what was one of the first ones we did it was air conditioned shoes or something like air that air conditioned shoes and it was just shoes with holes in them yep oh wow to keep your feet dry but your feet yep. are only getting wet because you're stepping in puddles and you have holes in your shoes that's pretty sick shoe umbrella was a good one <laughs> Classic. Classic. Uh, Classic. Who was, was it Pepe the Frog? No, it wasn't Pepe the Frog. No. What was the frog's name? Oh, Stefan. Stefan. Stefan the Frog. You have to listen to our podcast now. Yeah. Oh, no, they're hardcore it. listeners. Yeah. yeah. As all people should be. Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah, so we'll just get right into it. Uh, our first, we're going to talk about a few more tech-based uh, inventions today. The, the first one, I don't know if you guys have heard of this. It was on the news. It's called Amazon Key. Okay. It was a service oh. proposed oh. by Amazon that would allow Amazon couriers to drop packages off inside your home. Oh, yeah, I heard of that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but how, a group, could, how could a, that go wrong? A group of researchers found a security flaw that could let couriers back into your home without anyone being the wiser. Really? Yeah. And that was a bad thing. The yeah. biggest issue I see with this right off the bat um, is it, it, there's no purpose to it because what's the difference of them just... I understand like people can't steal your package or whatever. But now they stole but, your couch. Uh, yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> I, I feel like this is a bit of like a no-brainer, especially if it... Knowing that they can unlock your door, I'm guessing your lock's computerized, and I feel like someone could just hack in. Yeah, absolutely. Somehow mm -hmm. and break it. That doesn't seem like a good idea. Yeah, what would have to happen with this product to make it actually usable? What do you think, Pearson? Um, don't do it. Just don't do it. <laughs> what if you have okay? So in like different parts of the country and like in other countries, well, once Amazon takes over the government, then it's like they're gonna have access to everything, everything anyways. So. Yeah, that's a good point. I think Disney's gonna beat them to it. Search and seizure will just be legal. Yeah. Well, that's the new question. Which new world government are you most excited for, Amazon or Disney? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, John Stamos. He's got he's got some serious. What if money. Jeff Bezos? John Stamos. Oh, John Stamos. Oh, John, oh, John Stamos, he's actually, he has a third organization going on that we're not even aware of. I'm sure you guys have heard of Deep State. That's John Stamos. He went from House to White House. I mean, full House to White House, not House. Oh my God. That's a different guy. He went from, oh my gosh. Was, he went from A House to the too one. many house shows. Oh my gosh. All right. Okay. We'll move on to a better one. Uh, this one is called The Smalt. The smalt. What would you guess the smalt is? The smalt is a very small malt. Um, a very bad uh, hard rock band. Oh, there you go. What do you guys think? The smalt. Uh, it sounds like a like a bad version of like a malt shake. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Like a mini it's, shake, like the like Wendy's salt. one that you get that you dip like with a fries. small I, malt. Yeah, a small. It's a salt based malt shake. All right. Well, what is it? Well, you're close with salt. Um, it combines three things that definitely should have been combined by now. I don't know why this hasn't come out <laughs> sooner. Uh, it com it's a combination of a salt shaker, a music player, mood and mood lighting, and centerpiece. Why hasn't this been invented already? So it's a salt shaker that uh, has different color lighting, yeah. and, it, and it's very fancy and decadent, so you could put it like on the middle of a table and it would like light a room. Mm -hmm. And it's also a Bluetooth speaker, because why not? So, I know this is ridiculous, but what scenario would this be in where it wouldn't be like, oh yeah, of course I have a small here. I feel like a discotheque. Yeah. You're like, hey, where's the small man? <laughs> but why do they just have it for salt? They don't have it for pepper. They do have a black, like a black one for pepper, but it doesn't have a catchy name. Oh, let's come up with Both a catchy name. Both of them are called small. Let's call, come up with a catchy name. Smipper. Smipper. <laughs> Smipper. I'm pretty sure the S in small is for salt. <laughs> oh, right. So I don't understand why it's called malt, though. Yeah, oh. why is it small? Oh, because it's salt, but what's the M? It maybe must be the smart. M. smart. Like salt. smart. Oh, that's what it is. Wait. Music, maybe? Oh, maybe. salt, music, assaulting my senses. So, there. Lights. Lights. Technology. Camera action. We solved it. There we go. We figured it out. I think we cut you I, off at one point. Uh, it's I, I, you know, I was just going to say, I think it's just a big elaborate uh, plan where he, this guy probably 
you know, he had someone over and it's just like, hey, let me set the mode. And he <laughs> went to go grab uh, a remote for his, you know, his, his uh, sound console, but instead grabbed a salt shaker. And they're just like, and he didn't want to feel stupid, obviously. <laughs> yeah. So it's just, just like, oh, no, no, no. This is a, this is a, a small. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How is this invented? Like, how, how, how did this idea Wait, come to be? I think. But his, your idea is that this whole product is just a front to cover up with the, for a really <laughs> stupid mistake. He's like, uh, oh, it must be broken. There's no batteries uh, in my small. Yeah. No, it's, it's a real product. Yeah, Trust me. It's yeah, on a small, small. Yeah. It it's on Amazon. Out. <laughs> he, yeah, he and then he like invented it so that he would have something to say next time. Yes, <laughs> yes. Like, oh look, I put the batteries in. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, so, okay, so you know how products have uh, uh, prototypes and they usually look really bad. I imagine the prototype for this was just a uh, uh, salt shaker, duct tape to a light, duct tape <laughs> to a stereo, and duct tape to whatever else was a part of this product. Like it's still um, developing. Yes. What if the the songs get sadder the more salt you put on it? Uh, or they change when you shake it. There that would go. be awful. Yeah, or all I'd the say they just be more angry the more salt you add. All the songs are salt and or shaking. Shake, shake it. Shake, yeah. Shake. Yeah, it's just it's just almost exclusively Andre 3000 music. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I, the technology is impressive that they're able to to fit. I'm, I'm assuming the speaker is probably not that good in the salt shaker. And where would the speaker be? Is it like it's under the, the salt? Or is it under, like on the table? Because that seems like it's going to cancel the noise. Yeah. yeah. Or the salt's just like <laughs> bubbling up. When you <laughs> That's actually, that would be cool. Like, though. An like an you audio, see like the, yeah. the salt pop up when the bass hits. Yeah, like an audio visualizer or something like that. Well, hmm. I got another fun one. All right, well, uh, this it's gonna have to be the last one because my laptop's gonna oh, die. Okay, well, this is uh, it's called the barf suit. Um, Wait, is this related to the poopy poncho? <laughs> per- yes. <laughs> the if I wear both of these, I could do whatever I want. I can triple admit, harness catch system. I can admit whatever fluids or gases or solids <laughs> I need, oh. and never have to worry about. The social okay. consequences. So it says suit, but it's a t-shirt with uh, two eyeballs and a mouth across yes. the front. Yeah. And the mouth is a zipper. And when you unzip the zipper and open it up, it's a waterproof barf bag. So you, if you have to barf randomly in the middle of the day, you can just unzip your shirt and there's a small bag where you can barf into and then zip it back up and carry on with your day. Okay, I have a fun fact about the barf suit. Please tell me. I make every single person in the audience at my shows wear one. <laughs> Bad part. For the evisceration. Both the poop suit and the... Right. <laughs> uh, so is that so they can survive long enough to be eviscerated? <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. And then when they are eviscerated, just make a mess. Oh, oh, because you usually have to clean up after because the janitor's definitely dead after the show. Kind of right, funny that you're right. like barfing into your t-shirt's mouth. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you're barfing, oh my gosh, you're right. You're barfing into a it's mouth. Kind of no, <laughs> no. This is.